Hey guys and welcome back, I'm Steven from Tech Overseas. In today's video, I'm going to show you a tool that I've been using extensively for the past two weeks, professionally and personally, and it's an AI-powered ID, and it's called Cursor AI, so if you watch this in the future, I'm not being paid to talk about this, I just love this tool. And the thing is, Cursor AI is actually a fork of VS Code, so it was created on top of VS Code, which is great because VS Code has been my primary ID for the past eight years, and when you use Cursor AI, you're able to import all your VS Code settings, shortcuts, all your extensions, and everything that goes along with VS Code. So how do you actually use this tool? So you have to download it. So when you click download, I'm assuming that it actually detects your operating system because right now it's offering me to install cursor for Mac. Once you install it, you can actually go into settings and you can see everything. So right now, as you can see, I have the professional account and you have two things. So you have the premium usage models and you have the normal usage models. So the thing is with the premium, it's actually using GPT-4.0, it's actually using Cloud uh, 3.5 Sonnet, and for the free model, it's actually using GPT-4.0 Mini and Cursor Small. And so for these two models, you have no usage limit. And for the premium model, you actually have 500 premium models requests. It's not that much if you're working extensively professionally, but you might not reach this level that quickly. So if you go on Cursor, cursor.com slash cpp you can actually see that cursor tab it's the same thing as for example github copilot or super maven which is a code auto completion it can also fix some bugs it can lean some errors and and so much more now let's go in cursor ai and so as you can see cursor ai is actually the same as vs code because like i said cursor ai is a fork of vs code so the first thing that you have to do you do command b and then you go into the cursor AI settings. And so as you can see right now, you actually have your account, so you can manage your account and you can also import your VS Code settings, extensions and key bindings, which are your shortcuts. Now I have already done this, but if you haven't, you can just click on import and it will automatically migrate everything. Now you can give some rules for the AI. So for example, you can say act as a software developer with 15 years of experience and so on. And so it will actually orientate the AI into something very specific. Uh, so this is pretty much it on this page. What's most important for us, it's actually the models. So as you can see right now, you have multiple models. So you have GPT-4, GPT-4.0, Cloud-3 and so on. And so personally, so far, I have only toggled GPT-4.0 and Cloud-3.5 Sonnet. I don't really want the other one. And so you will see later that when you make a request or when you use the tool, you can actually select which model you want to use. Now, as you can see in the pricing, you can see that it's actually $20 per month. The thing is, you can also use your own API keys. And so Cursor AI allows you to use your Entropic API key or your Google API key. So Entropic is for cloud and Google API key is for something like, for example, Gemini or, or, or whatever else they have. Now, in the features, you can see that we have a bunch of things that you can actually enable, you can actually disable, you can resync your index. Now, I will let you go through all those settings. I rarely touch anything because I'm pretty happy with the out of the box behaviors. Now, let's close it and I'm going to show you how it looks like. So, I have used a previous code base from my video, React Query. And if you haven't seen React Query, I will put the link somewhere here. It's a really good video and it will teach you everything you have to know about React Query. Now, as you can see right now, I'm going to actually start the application and I'm going to show you what it's doing. If I go on a local host, it's a simple user management application. We have a name, a hobby, we can add a user and also we can actually see the list of users. So let's see how it works. I can say, for example, Steven likes to surf. I press enter. And I have Steven likes to surf. Now, if I click on surf, I can say Steven likes to swim. I edit. Now it's saved. And if I refresh the page, you can see that we still have Steven likes to swim. And I can also delete the user. So pretty straightforward application. Now let's actually see how we can leverage Cursor AI in order to help us in our daily task. So the first thing that you'll most likely do is Command K. So Command K will actually allow you to generate snippets of code. So for example, here. I can just do something and say, when there is an error, can you please log the error message instead of a hard coded one? Uh, when you press enter, you're going to see that I can accept the suggestion, I can reject, or I can add follow up instruction in order to give more precision about my prompt. Now, command enter will accept and command backspace will actually reject. So I will do command enter, I will remove what I had before. And as you can see right now, I'm actually using the error and it's logging the error. And it's also passing the, in the toast error deleting user and it's giving me the, the actual error code. 
So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go in API and I'm going to throw an error when I'm trying to remove the user. So throw a new error. Now let's actually save and go back to our application. So here I can say again, Steven likes to cook, I add a user. And now if I go in my list of user and I try to delete it, you see that we have an error and it's actually logging us the user with the actual message of the error. And so most of the time, what you will use in uh, Cursor AI is the command K because command K is actually very good for generating piece of code. Now let's go in the util functions and let's say that I want to actually validate some user's data. So what I can do here, I can do command K and I can say, I want you to create a function in order to validate the data from, I can do at, and here I can give more context to cursor AI and I will say user form. So now what it's going to do is going to pull out the context from this file. And as you can see right now, it's in this file where I have my handle add user. Okay. It's actually going to generate the piece of code in order to validate the user. This is great. Now what I can do, I don't want to actually return errors. I want to show a toast message. So I can add a follow-up instruction and say, good. However, can you instead return a toast error message in order to show the error on the page? Now, if I submit the edit, it will override the changes. And you can see that right now, what we have, we have something completely different. So we have something where uh, if there is no name, it's telling me name required. It's less than two characters and so on and so on. Now I can click accept. And as you can see right now, it has imported the library. So this, what we can do, we can copy it and we can put it at the top of the file. So this is great. So command K will generate piece of code in the specific file you are in. However, what if you actually want to use this function where it should be used? And that's where composer and the chat actually come into action. So command K is for generating the, the snippets of code in the file you're in. Now command shift K is to open the composer view. So the composer view is actually the feature. It's a new feature that will allow you to do anything you want across your entire code base, okay? Now, if you don't like this floating thing, you can either click here on the button to open the control panel and it, and it expand the composer view, or what you can do, you can actually do command shift I and it opens the view. So you have, I repeat, so command shift K, the floating panel, and command shift I is the big one, okay? So the composer view will actually use the context of the file you're opening it into. So right now you can see that I opened the composer tool in my util. Now let's go in the user item. If I open the composer, you can see that now the context is actually user item. So if you want to reference some files in your prompt, this is how you do it. Okay. You do at and you select the files that you want. However, if you want to add files to the context itself, you can do hashtag and then you add the file. And as you can see, the file was added here. So we can remove all of these. So now what we want, let's actually use the validate user. So we can select our user item, our user form and our initial. I am going to say before you submit the user, can you please use the validate user function from the, and now I'm going to use the file and I'm going to say from the util files. Now, if I press enter, it's going to create a function where it's going to validate the user form. And now if I accept all, as you can see, I will go back to my user form. And now we have the function that was pasted. So, and it was automatically saved. Now, if I go in my add user, if I press one letter and I click add user, you can see name must be at least two characters. If I don't specify a name, you can see name is required. And so just like that, by using normal text and normal language, we have been able to like add a feature to our code. Now this was the composer, but there is another thing you can use. You can actually use the chat. So if you do command L, it's going to open the chat on the side. And so what you can do, for example, here, you can select what model you want to use. So I'm always using cloud three because I think it's the best model right now, but you can use whatever model is available in the settings that we saw in the beginning. Now, if I click at, you can see that we have the same things. We have the files, the folder, the code, the web, uh, doc, git, and the code base. Now we have one more thing that we didn't have in the composer and it's actually the images. So what you can do, and this is extremely powerful, let's go on a website like Dribbble, for example. So Dribbble is a design website. And so let's say, for example, something very simple that we actually want to implement this login and sign up. Okay. 
Now let's save this and what you're going to do in your cursor AI, you're going to use this image. So in the desktop, I'm going to take the screenshots. We have the image right now. What I can do, I actually want to add these buttons under the user form. So under the form, I want to add this login and sign up. And so I can close my files and you will see that even though the files are not open, it will know the context because we are going to specify the context or we can simply not specify the context and we can just search the entire code base. So I want you to create these two buttons under the add user form in and I'm going to add a file and I'm going to say it's in uh, the user form. Okay. So when you put user form, it's actually going to return to you the whole file. And so just like that, you can click and you can verify, uh, yes, it's this file. So now you can collapse. And so if you press enter, now let's go in our user form and you're going to see that what it's going to do is going to create a fragment because it knows there cannot be two root child in the react uh, component so it's going to create a fragment and just like that here it's going to add two new buttons outline and we have contain because also it has the context of material ui because for this project i'm going to show you i'm actually using uh, material ui and so it's been using this in order to design our button. So what you can do right now, you can click on apply and you can apply to entire file. And so just like that is going to generate and here is going to give you the differences. So you can either accept or reject or you can just accept everything and it's going to uh, replace everything and then you can save your file. And now if we go back to our application, you can see that we have our login and our sign up. Now what I can say, I can say, okay, these are not the right colors. So I can say good. However, can you please respect the style and colors of my initial image? Now, if I press enter, we are going to see what it's going to do. It's going to say, I apologize, blah, 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 blah. I can just go into apply, apply to entire file. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to replace and I can accept the changes and I can save. Now, if I go back in my application, you can see that it's kind of looking the same. We have a login, which has no background and we have a sign up, which has the black background and it's exactly the same. And so what I can do, for example, I can say, uh, great. Can you stack them instead of having them side by side? Also spread them across the entire parent width. So just like that, again, I give some more information. I give some follow-ups. It's going to change the code and I'm going to apply, apply to entire file and accept, or I can reject the changes. So just like that, you can see that now you see they are stacked and they are taking the entire parent width. So just like that, you can see that you can use simple language in order to do some very simple things. So what I like to do, for example, I like to say something like, can you please extract this component into their own styling component, for example. So here I will going to, I'm going to say in the file user form, can you please extract all the component with inline styles into their own styled components. Now I press enter and usually it's pretty good at removing those SX property in order to create some uh, separate component. As you can see right now, it has created a button container, a login container, a sign up button. And now if I actually scroll down, you can see that it's much more readable. We only have the, the component with their variants. So let's apply and let's accept. Let's save and let's see what it did on the UI. So as you can see on the UI, nothing changed. We still, I can refresh the page. We still have the same button and we still have the same UI. However, now it's much cleaner. We have our button container, our login button, our sign up button is so much cleaner. Now, something you can actually do is ask the code base. So if you do command L, it's going to open the chat. Let's not specify any context, any file, any code, anything. And I'm going to say, where is the logic in order to update a user and so now i'm going to press command enter and it's going to look into the global context so it's going to pull out all the files and then it's going to explain to me what's happening so as you can see right now in user item we have this update user function then in the api route handler we have the put request and also in the database file we have the update user so as you can see right now it has been able to identify every single piece of code that allow us to update a user now what we can say for example we can actually ask the chat to help us build a new feature so we can say great i would like to save and update the age of the user 
can you please help me to add this additional picture and so i'm going to press command and enter and so now as you can see it's actually going to read all the files and again it's going to suggest some edits so now we see that it's suggesting to edit the type user because we have the age here it add the age here it's also adding i assume here the age also it's good in the use form we should be getting the age so we get the age this is good and as you can see right now it has updated every single file so let's go ahead and apply them one by one so here we are going to accept the type update we are going to accept the schema update let's accept the database update just like that let's go in the update form where we have the actual updates let's apply it to the entire file again all right so now we can accept this when it comes to updating the user item we are going to get the new version so here we are going to apply and then accept we have the validate function which also has the age here so if it's not a number and so on so we can apply here we can accept the change finally we have the post request and here we need to actually yeah save the age so we're going to apply and then accept so now if i go into my application you can see that now we have the age and it's an input field number so i can actually say that my user is 21 and i check steven and i say cook i add the user and so now we get an error and the reason why we get an error let's check um connection is uh, connection with sqlite database is not established okay so yeah the reason why is because we are trying to save the age of the user but we don't have the age column in our user and i can open the query editor could do command k can you add an age column and so just like that we can create uh, an age column and we can also update the existing row so it's not set to no i'm going to accept i'm going to click here and so now we have the age uh, column which have no value and if we want to actually set a placeholder i can click on this button and you can see that it's replacing the age with 30. now if i close this and i go back to my ui and i try to add a new user so i will do the same and i will do for example 34 add user you can see that the user was added successfully with the age 34 if i click on age i can change the hobby and i can also change the age for let's say 49 now if i press edit you can see that it changed for swim and 49 if i refresh the page now we have the new values and that's it guys i hope you like this video it's a bit different from what i've been doing from the beginning and i really recommend you to actually go in the cursor.com website and you can actually see all the features so some of the features that we've seen the code generation the multi-line edits uh, smart rewrites and so on the multi-line edits is actually really cool so last thing i'm going to show you so when you go back for example on your page you go in the user form and let's say you have multiple fields for example let's say that you actually want to change this whole thing now what you can do obviously you can do command d and select them all however with cursor ai you can just simply say for example medium and what it's going to do is going to offer you to auto complete the rest so when you when you press tab it's actually going to show you everything that can be uh, tabbed and modified and if it doesn't work what you can do you can simply click on the next occurrence and again it's going to offer you to tab and then you just press tab and just like that it's going to change every single thing that it's assuming that you want to change or that should be changed alongside so this is one of the very great features that i've been experiencing command k we've seen it and so yeah so also they have a really great documentation where they summarize everything that i've taught you if you like it give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there is anything you would like me to cover next thank you for watching and until then happy coding